It made you me laugh because you were like, yeah, you're like, I got to be real. I can't, you know, otherwise it's all bullshit. I'm not, what am I going to get up there and be like, hey, I was at Starbucks today. And they're like, no, you weren't. Oh, yeah. They're all closed. Yeah, you're all closed. Hey, you know, I flew the other day. No, you, no, you didn't. didn't. You liar, yeah. boo. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, at the mall and uh, it was closed, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think always when you do stand up is you're going to play the moment. You got to be as real as you can be. I mean, you can't pretend <laughs> something's not happening in the room if it's happening. Right. You have to address it. It's like, be real. It's, like I always say, you know, comedians, we're like strippers, except we, we kind of undress mentally. You get to see inside the psyche. You get to see how we think. You get to see, see us be vulnerable. That's part of the attraction of it. You know, that's part of why, why people like it. You get to see, I mean, I think, like, Stan, you, you get to see it be fucking human. And we're back. Hey, everybody, it's your host, Darren Carter, the party starter. Yeah. Here he is, Mr. Jimmy Schubert. <laughs> Hey, bonjour, Darren Carter, the party starter. It's good to be part of your podcast. Thank you for having me on, brother. I know we did a we did a show today. We did one of those social distance uh, laugh lounge shows, which was really cool. Huh? That was really neat. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, um, what were your thoughts going? But for the people that know uh, don't know what we're talking about, it's a uh, we went to a studio. Uh, the same people that shoot some of these uh, like Netflix shows and. And uh, they, they, they're just high-end cameras, great production. They've shot specials. And they invited, uh, um, they invited four comics to come do it. And, and, and Jimmy Schubert, myself, Mario Joyner, and Augustino Zoida had the pleasure of doing it. So I didn't know what to think. What, what were your thoughts going into it, like the day before or on the way there? What were you thinking? Well, well the, the guy who runs Laugh Lounge, Laugh Lounge app, uh, it's an app on your phone. Um, and my friend Claude, uh, it, it's interesting because the last 10 years of his life, he's done post-production. He directed my comedy special, Zero Tolerance, but he's also done, um, uh, who's, he's done a couple of them and he's edited them and he's done post-production on them, but he's the one who created this app and it only took a pandemic for this to become relevant because people can't go sit at comedy clubs now. Uh, you get a lot of comedians that are out of work. Our industry has been greatly affected by COVID-19. Not only our industry, but all the surrounding industries, all the wage staff and everything. So um, I think people really need to laugh now. So this this app is a way for people to see some live stand-up. And they have like 20 people on a Zoom call that were on a giant television in front of us who were actually performing for an audience, which was cool. Believe me, it felt so good to do it. I haven't, I haven't been on stage in two months. Dude, it felt great. It, and by the way, it was, it was uh, okay. So my thoughts going into it, I was like, is it going to be like a Zoom call? And it, and it was way better than that. It was like, it was incredible, man. Like, like being on stage with the microphone, with the TV cameras, with the audience being virtually in the room with us. I mean, I, I walked out feeling like that was the closest you can come to like a real TV taping. And I had high expectations and it, and it reached it because – you know, um, I've done different levels of these internet shows, and I would say that was like the top level of what, what you know, it was great. Yeah, I, I only did it because I knew what I was walking into. I, I know how hard those guys work to build this app. I know the technologies involved. I know how much money he spent to do it. And we actually got paid to do it, so that was nice. That'll be grocery money for this week. Um, you know, it's just, it's uh, look, when you, when, when you, like doing stand-up for me is like breathing air. I'm a I'm an old school stand up. This is what I was born to do. I love making people laugh, and I have a passion for it. And it's part of who I am. Unfortunately, I just love to do it. It's like you know, I love being around other comedians. We did have fun. It was nice to be around people, we, even though we're all wearing masks and social distancing <laughs> and stuff. It was still you're fun. gonna laugh at me. Look, this is I left I left this mask at home. And when you saw me today, I was wearing a bandana, looking like a blood or a crip or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I had the, I had the medicinal mask on myself, the N95 mask. <laughs> it was hilarious because I knew the first, the moment I saw you guys, that's when the comedy sparks hit. And the minute I saw uh, Augustino, I go, come here, buddy. I'm a hugger. <laughs> And I knew he'd be like, ha! You know, yeah. like <laughs> dude, what was that? No, I, no it, it, it was fun. I think it was, it was a lot like, uh, like you said, it was the closest you could come to doing a real comedy show without actually being in a real comedy club. And our friend Claude Shires, who runs the Laugh Lounge, Laugh Lounge app, 
which people can go to. Go to Laugh Lounge app, and they have content up there. And for, what is it, three ninety five a month, four ninety five a month, you can watch stand-up comedy. You know, Beans, we're not allowed to go on stand-up, stand-ups anymore. And so I think he's in position A, at least for the next several months, until we get back to some kind of normalcy. You know, because I go... I go back and forth between thinking that this is the scariest thing ever to thinking this is all bullshit. I really do. I, I, I mean, I, I just, I, I go, ah, I don't want to get it, but I also think a lot of it's, I, I, and I look, I know it's real, but a lot of the people who are dying have all pre-existing conditions like diabetes or, or right. heart disease or, or tuberculosis or, or obesity or other things. I mean, like the average person that dies from it is like 81. You know, so I know other people have died. I'm not I'm not undermining it. I know it's serious business. But at the same time, we've all been quarantining for two months. We've all been home for two months. We did flatten the curve. It seems like they have their arms around it now. And if people are at risk, they should stay home and shelter in place, especially the most vulnerable of our society. But let the people that are healthy enough to get out there and get busy getting back to work because I, I, I think, uh, you know, if this goes on through the summer, you're going to see some real, real craziness in the streets of Los Angeles. Yeah. And thank God that sunlight does kill, kill a lot of the, you know, they do, they say it does kill Dude, the coronavirus. Well, I've been working, walking every day, five and six miles in the sun. The sun itself, you're exposed. We are a vitamin D deficient culture. And me <laughs> and you by choice, because we're a couple gingers, you know what I mean? Hey, hey, we say, need like an say what you said. To, say what you said today. You go all this time, my whole life. The sun was my enemy, and I love that line you said. I said, "Yeah, the sun's my enemy. It's the green goblin to my Spider-Man." You know, <laughs> which, which I was going to say anyway, Darren. You didn't have to set me up. Oh, but sorry. But it is. It's, no, it's all right. <laughs> I, I've done this a little bit, uh, but no, but it is. So you. So, but the sun. Uh, even 20 minutes exposure to it, it will release antimicrobials that fight viruses, parasites, and infection in the body. And, 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 and we live in a vitamin D deficient culture. So I've read in this, during the Spanish flu in 1918, they said all these hospital tents outside because people needed fresh air and sunshine. And that's actually what turned it around. That's actually what helped these people heal. So, yeah. you know, don't, don't stay in your house. Get outside. Get some sun. Walk, get some exercise, because it's good for your mental health. It's yes. good for your soul. It's good for your body. If you lay on your couch all day, you're going to get incredibly depressed and yeah. wind up trying to scratch an itch on the back of your throat with a shotgun barrel. <laughs> and they, dude, I'm telling you, you know what's funny? I got this app, and it, and you can track how far you've walked. And because uh, my Fitbit yeah. broke, when you know my Fitbit broke. Like, like right when the lockdown started. So I couldn't count my steps. It was almost like, like, it was almost like the government was like, stop trying to walk around. We're going to break your Fitbit. But oh, that's now that sucks. I, I love my Fitbit. I really do. I get I up the too. first thing in the morning. I, but, um, you know, but I got, I got an app, you know, on my phone. And the other day I was, I was like, I, I want to see how far I can walk. And I would, I would walk and I'd come back, take a break for an hour, then go out and walk again. And, I did about 12 miles that day and I'm telling you, it felt great. It felt great. Like you said, it feels yeah. good for your body. You know what? You know what good I, for your mind. Yeah. You know what else I'm doing? I'm jerking off with hand sanitizer just to make sure, you know, cause I don't know where I've been. I don't trust myself. Sure. You lose a little sensitivity, but what the hell Darren, you know what I mean? Yeah. It makes you extra safe with the ladies. Hey, you know what I mean? I, but uh, yeah, I think it's imperative to guard your mental health more than anything else um, during this because everybody's susceptible. The only thing that keeps me sane is I know that we're all going through it simultaneously. Everybody's struggling and trying to uh, do the best they can in this situation. You know, some are doing better than others. Obviously, all you have to do is scroll down your social media feeds and you see some people would not do well in prison, you know? Right. You know what? Uh, somebody made a great point. They, um, I know a guy that survived cancer and he, and he, he said, you know, I, I, was in, I was in a hospital bed for five months. He goes, guys, you can do this, man. You can, we can get through this. And when you put it in that perspective, I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, that's, well, you that's know, what, you know the other thing is, that, yeah, but you know, the other thing is too, is, is it's perspective. True. But the other thing is, believe me, I spend my life on airplanes. I spend my life not in living in hotel rooms. So for me to be home now, I yeah. can actually, I've rearranged my apartment. 
I cleaned out this, this my, my back bedroom. I got that efficient. I've been reading some books I've been meaning to read. Not that I couldn't read while I was traveling, but I've just gone stuff, stuff I've been meaning to do that I've been putting off because I get so busy. You get so caught up. And also the exercise, the eating healthy, it's all part of it. And so, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I'm you, feeling, I, I'm, you, I'm feeling really good, you know? I heard you say something recently on a podcast. I liked it. You go, you go, I got four books going, man. I got four books going. And when you said that, it made me think like, you know what? Because I've been focusing on this one particular book and I thought, why not get another book going? Because your brain can handle more than one book, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is the different books for different moods. Like I'm, so sometimes I got a book next to my bed when I want to, I, I get into the book and it helps me fall asleep. I got another book here that's a little shorter. You can read it a chapter, just a chapter at a time. You know, and um, and I because I, I, I find myself when I when, I, when I'm reading when I'm writing a lot, I'm also reading a lot. I think it inspires me and it helps me and it motivates me to get writing on some new material. Look, I'm going to come out of this quarantine 20 pounds lighter. I'm going to come out of this quarantine with about a half hour of new material. I got my new uh, my new album is dropping on iTunes. Um, May 15th at midnight, which is Thursday night, Friday morning, and all digital platforms across the board. It's one of my funniest albums ever. I'm really proud of it. I am my own worst critic, but this album, I've listened to it six times. I find that I, it's a really good piece of work. So I got that going. And I'm tell us, tell, tell I'm us the name of the album. The, the album is Zero Tolerance. Zero Tolerance. You go to jimmyschubert.com. There's a pre-order button below, like you can just scroll down and it says, there's a little personal note for me and says, hey guys, if you want to order my new album, you can pre-order here. And I, I want to tell your fans this because I know obviously the people that listen to your podcast are comedy fans. If you have people that you're fans of, you should check their albums out on Spotify and Pandora and make a playlist of comedy albums because I think that'll help people get through this. You can't watch the news. You watch the news. You wind up in a fetal position underneath your yeah. coffee table, working on a callus on the roof of your mouth from a loaded revolver. It's depressing. <laughs> it's fear-based. I can't watch the news anyway. I mean, I, and I will not, I will not watch it during this. There, there are a bunch of fucking liars. They've been lying to us about, they're lying about the numbers are off. They're liars. They're absolute fucking liars. Go live your life. Absolutely. I have, by the way, I'm going to, uh, you, you said if you like comedians, see if they have albums, uh, guys, I have four albums. I have shady side that ginger's crazy stay at home stripper and the party continues. And you're right about the news, man. Sometimes I'll Jimmy, I'll go to just check my email. And then like, I get these alerts, like, you know, Yahoo news. And I'm like, and it's just like these scary, like alerts, these scary push notifications. I've got to figure out how to turn them off because I think they, they want to scare you to get you to click to stay on their pages longer. That, that's all it is. It's all fear. It's all fear. The, 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 you know, look, I, you know, it's interesting. I went to India with Russell Peters in October and I had to go get three shots. Uh, I went to see a travel doctor. I got three shots for the travel, but she also wrote me a prescription for hydroxychloroquine, azithromycin, wow. and I have a zinc treatment. So I actually have it in my cabinet. I mean, if I start to feel the symptoms of this thing, I would take the I would take the hydroxychloroquine and and the zithromycin, and 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 and, tr and what it does is it, it cuts it. You're still gonna feel like shit, but it'll cut it in half. As opposed to being sick for three weeks, you'll only be sick for a week. And I'm not gonna wait till I need a fucking until you have to intubate me. I would take that almost. Uh, you know, if I got the symptoms and was running a fever, I would take it fucking immediately. And just by chance, I have it. My special is called Zero Tolerance, the album. So people can get it on iTunes across all digital platforms. And Darren, that will also be my fourth album, brother. High five up top. Yeah, high five, yeah. virtual high five. Bam. Because we're working, bro. We're working and writing. Dude, you know, we are, man. Like even today. When I was getting ready for the show, I got to tell you, it felt good, man, to put on my the, the clothes that I like to perform in. I haven't really worn those shoes since my last show. I uh, <laughs> the the production they they uh, they've worked with me a few times, and they were like, "Hey, buddy, you got your flashlight?" And I was like, "Yep." And they go, "Do the batteries work?" And I go, "Funny you mention that, because <laughs> because I was wondering." I go, "I haven't really used this flashlight in like you know six weeks, eight months, or two months, whatever it's been." And uh, yeah. it kind of felt you know it felt good to put those clothes on. And I got to tell you preparing for today for that filming, 
I um I, I listened to some some of my my more recent sets, and it yeah. kind of put me back in that mindset. And uh, I started popping off with some jokes, man. It's weird, like yeah, the, dude. That whole set I did, that whole set I did was stuff I've written. <laughs> I I was I wasn't even able to try any of it out except for today. You know, I mean, it was like I had a good idea that a lot of it would work, but hmm. and it did, but. You're right. Just because I talked to uh, Mario, Mario said he ain't been on stage in like, you know, 67 days. I ain't been on yeah. stage in two months. And I got to tell you, even though I take two weeks off, I get a little rusty. Two months. I mean, who knows? I mean, thank yeah. God we didn't have to do more than 15 minutes, but it was great. It felt fucking great. So I'm glad that, uh, you know, was able to get. Plus, we knew I, I knew you. I knew Mario. And of course, Augustino. So it was a lot of fun, I man. I guess my fear was that, that uh, you know, I was going to be in this, this empty room with some cameras, no audience, and I was going to go blank. My mind would go blank. So I think that's why I almost over-prepared today. Like, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And started, you, you, do, you know what I mean? You saw, you saw my set list. I had these giant set lists, and I put them on the floor just in case <laughs> so I could look down. Yeah. I could be, you remember how you said my, my, I have a dozen on my set list are real big. Because I wanted to put them on the floor in front of me just in case. And I did. I glanced down at it two or three times. But you I'm glad I did that. We got to tell people the, 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 our, our, uh, our conversation before. Because you go, I'm going to do a bunch of new stuff. And I was like, you are? You're not a, I mean, you're going to do new stuff? And you're like, yeah, what am I going to do? And then you go, you tell us what you said. Do you remember? I said, yeah. Well, I said, when I was doing NBC's last comic standing, some of those bits I do were like brand new bits. I did them on national television. I mean, if you're going to look, you know, I, I'm a comic. I could read the phone book and make it funny if I had to. I know who I am, and I knew this stuff would work. But uh, but it, yeah. but it's like, yeah, why why not? I mean, that's part of the gist. I mean, that's it, it made me laugh because you, you were like, yeah, you're like, I got to be real. I can't, you know, otherwise it's all bullshit. I'm not. What am I going to get up there and be like, hey, I was at Starbucks today, and they're like, no, you weren't. Oh, yeah. They're all closed. Yeah, you're all closed. Hey, you know, I flew the other day. No, you no, didn't. you did it, you liar, yeah. boo. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, at the and mall I, and uh, it was closed. You know, yeah. Well, I think always when you do stand up, is you got to play the moment. You got to be as real as you can be. I mean, you can't pretend something's not happening in the room if it's happening. Right. You have to address it. It's like be real. It's like I always say, you know, comedians we're like strippers, except we we kind of undress mentally. You get to see inside the psyche. You get to see how we think. You get to see see us be vulnerable. That's part of the attraction of it. You know, that's part of why, why people like it. You get to see, I mean, I think, like, stand up, you, you get to see it be fucking human, you know, and, and that's uh, and that's cool. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm kind of just trying to keep staying motivated here, you know? Yeah, and I, I, uh, it's funny how we all had a different take, you know, doing a little bit of, you know, stuff of what's happening and blending in other material. Like, like uh, I went to the dealership last week. And just no, being... you the dealerships are closed. <laughs> no. I was at the uh, Tesla dealership. Uh, oh, were no, you really? No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't. But I just saw before we hopped on. I know you don't, you know, this is actually not, this is positive news. It said that um, Elon Musk is going to stay in California because he was sort of threatening to leave. And apparently no, Colorado, yeah, Colorado was like, well, we'll take you. And then Texas was like, we'll take you. And then so supposedly he's staying in California no, for now. Nevada. No, uh, no, bro, he's not. I'm telling you, they just closed the, the stay-at-home order through the end of August. No, I just I'm read it. I just, I just read that Tesla that he's going to keep it open in Fremont. All right, maybe, but I'll tell you what. Yeah. He, he's not. But people are leaving California in droves. They are. They are. People are leaving in droves. I talk to people in Idaho, talk to people in Vegas, talk to people in Oregon. A lot of Californians are getting the fuck out of this state. And obviously, dude, when we were driving home, I saw all these tent cities underneath bridges all these homeless people. I mean, we had mm. an outbreak of typhus, which is an ancient disease oh, that was actually yeah. cured. You know, cops are getting it because they have to interact with the homeless people. I mean, you know, I mean, these, these blue governors, I, I think California, uh, Illinois, Michigan, and Pennsylvania are all having a four-way contest to see who has the shittiest governor. You know, <laughs> I mean, a lot of these people, yeah. a lot of these people forget you know, that you work for the people by the people, for the people, you yep. know, you are not some kind of a thought, you're not some kind of dictator, you know, you don't get to say stay at home while you, you, you don't have an ability to feed your family, 
these people, while well, you still collect the paycheck, which is paid for by our tax dollars. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I think healthy people should get back out there, social distance, wear a mask, but let's get those people back to work. Yeah. And some of the other people can shelter in place. If you, if you think about it, it is a little unfair that Home Depot can be open, Walmart. Some of the big chains can be open, but then a guy who yeah, has like, small businesses yeah. can't. Right. And that's bullshit. And if you can go to Walmart and Home Depot, then you go stand in line and vote on November 3rd. And these people think it's actually going to help their cause to ruin the economy. I got news for you. It ain't. And I'll tell you what, you keep this shit up, you may turn California fucking red. It's crazy, man. I what went a to thing a, that would be. I, I go to, I, you go to some restaurants and the employees have masks. And then uh, I went and got a, a, a pizza last week. And uh, everybody was shoulder to shoulder, pretty much working, no masks. And so it's really weird. It's like certain counties are doing it. Other counties are, I don't know, man. Yeah, because they're in a hot fucking kitchen. They're in a hot kitchen. They're in a hot kitchen cooking hot pizza. They're in a right. hot kitchen cooking hot pizza. They're sweating yep. their balls off making pizza. The virus ain't coming in there. The virus don't like pizza. <laughs> I like pizza. The virus doesn't like pizza. Yeah. Jimmy, you're you're funny. You're always you know, on point. You always knock it out of the yeah, park. Yeah, you know, look, yeah. I, you know. Anything you want to say? I'm sorry, uh, what did you say? I didn't hear. I said, I said you're, 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 anything you'd like to say before we wrap it up? I like to always end these shows with words of wisdom, uh, little words of inspiration, things, things you've yeah, learned. Man, yeah, yeah well, well, the words of wisdom are, uh, listen, man, I, I think that the thing that's come out of this the most is it turns out the little things are the big things. I wish I could go back and hug my mom and dad. I wish I'd go have a beer with my brothers. I wish I could hang out with my comic buddies at the comedy store and have some laughs and a couple of drinks. I miss that the most. Uh, I think we should all be kinder to one another. I mean, the thing about this is that this disease doesn't know race. It doesn't know gender. It doesn't know age. Everybody's been affected by it. And we're really fighting for the survival of the species because if this thing got crazy and got out of hand, it could have wiped out much, many more people, you know? And thank God that we have some of the medicines and we had some heads up about this that we did because it could have been much worse. Um, yes. So I think people should be kinder to one another. I think we're all in this, you know, people say, oh, we're all in this together. Fuck you. You're in a million dollar house with a fucking <laughs> endless supply of fucking resources. And I'm over here fighting for my fucking life. I got no stimulus check, whatever. But, but it doesn't mean I can't. Uh, cook a meal for my neighbor and bring something over if somebody needs anything. Check on your friends. See what they need. Be kinder to one another. You know, I think this has been a, it's been a hard reset button for humanity. I really do. Uh, and, and I think, you know, you know, we're not the enemy. You know, you, 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 you know, you have, you know, pe we're all in this together, man. I mean, really, as human beings, you know. So, um, but I, I think that, you know, I'll, I'll, close, I'll close in saying this, is that, you know, support comedians, play them on Spotify, play them on Pandora, because we do get paid when you play our, our cuts. And it may not be a lot of money, but it's enough money to buy groceries. It's enough money to, to put towards rent. So if you have comedians you like, put together a playlist and run through. I got three albums. I know Darren has three albums. I also have my fourth album dropping uh, Thursday, May 15th at midnight, Thursday, Friday morning. It drops at midnight across all digital platforms. It is a hilarious album. Go get it. Do me a solid. You'll, and, and you'll laugh. I promise you, you'll laugh. And we all need laughter. That's the other thing. You know, we do need to laugh because we get caught up in this worrying and craziness. Oh, I don't know. What to laugh. Don't take yourself too so Laugh a little bit. It'll make you feel good. It's good for your soul. Absolutely. Jimmy, you're the Stay best. Stay out of the sun, Darren, because you can't. <laughs> no, no. I know. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Right. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> you're welcome, buddy. I love you. We'll, we'll talk well, soon. You're like me, bro. You're a ginge. No, we got to be careful. Yeah, exactly. Okay, All buddy. Right, sounds good, man, Darren. Peace out, buddy. We're done with this interview. Well, look at you watching the video all the way through. I want to thank you guys for checking out the Pocket Party Podcast, putting these on so I can see a little bit better. And, uh, Man, what else can I say? Uh, it's great watching the YouTube channel build, growing. People are subscribing. They're leaving comments. They're sharing it. And it's been a real treat to be a part of your life 
and I really appreciate you guys checking out the videos. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, I think that's about it. Um, do me a favor and click one of these videos and keep on watching. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks again, Darren Carter, Party Starter.